everyone, it's Angie. Today, I'm going to be making one of these. As you can see, I made my own stamp for this. I made it quite some time ago, I just haven't gotten around to doing this. But this one here I did because I was just experimenting. This is the cutter I used for it. It's the, the smallest one out of my set that I have. They're just plastic cutters, I found somewhere in town. But I want a smaller one. I want to make a smaller one. So I made, and you probably can't see it very well because it's clear plastic. So I made a smaller one. Still can't really see it well, can you? Because it's, it's clear plastic, right? <laughs> anyway, I used this and I took a marker and drew inside and then I just kept bringing, cutting it down to size. I've already made, well, this is my cane that I made before my bumblebee cane. And I have already made some bumblebee beads that I will be using with this. So first, what I'm gonna to need to do, is make some room, because I'm zoomed in quite a bit. So I'll spray some water on here. Lay my clay on it. And I've got this on my second largest and I folded it in half. So I want to make sure I get a really good imprint of my uh, honeycomb look. And I'm just gonna, my fingers hurt. So I'm gonna use my thumbs and just push it in and try and get it in as good as I can. Because I want to get that honeycomb look. And I'm using 18 karat gold Primo clay. So I don't think I mentioned that. So I'll keep pitter pattering over it with my thumbs. Get it the impression as best I can. Now let's see. It's looking pretty good. So I'll gently just peel it off. Like so. Next thing is to dry it. Dry off the area. It's the thing about using water. You need it completely dry. Or it won't stick to the table so that you can... Uh, Shave off the top, which is what I'm going to do next. Get a little bit closer, I think. There. I'm just going to use my small blade. And I'm just going to take off the top part, like so. Again, I'm pulling it. I like to save these for another project. So I'll get my parchment paper and I'll just lay that on it after. See, it's still a little wet because it's not sticking to the table. I'll just put those off to the side for now. keep doing this until I get it nice and close and then I'll burnish it and then I'll come back and we'll go to the next step okay, okay I'm all done I've got a piece of paper here and I'm just going to lightly burnish it move some of this stuff out of my way I'm just going to take my small acrylic roller and just lightly go over it. I want to get it nice and smooth. And I don't want to mess up my design. See? Yeah, that is pretty good. So now, 
that from stuck, being stuck to the table, I will. I need to reduce this because it's too big. And this mark on my hand is from making my little stencil there for my smaller hexagon. It's three size, six side, yep, six side hexagon. So I'm just gonna reduce this slowly till I get it very itsy bitsy tiny. And this is all I have left of my bumblebee cane. I'm probably gonna have to make another one. Maybe if I make another one, I'll record it. I didn't record this one because I wasn't sure how good it would come out. It didn't come out perfect by no means, but it's still cute. And I have made a few things with it. Different um, necklaces that I've made, pendants that have flowers on them. I put a little couple bumblebees in there, bumblebees in with it. Looks cute. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's either just a little tiny. And I also have to use this, but I'm just gonna trim this off. I only have the one. So, well, trim it off if I don't mess it up. And two, so I can take some of this clay. I don't need all of it there. Salvage what we can, right? I'm just going to cut off a few of these. Probably not even in the screen. Well, that can stay there since it plumped right there. And I'm just going to lay them on top and then we'll burn a cheese in for the earrings. I also want to make some more beads too. And I think I'm going to use this here that I trimmed off. I want to make some black circles and just put a few little pieces of that here and there on it. To go with the ones that I've already made. I don't think this is going to be a short tutorial, but I find short tutorials don't really create a whole lot. So they're just quick little canes, really. I'll just do a couple more of these and it should be enough. See, so, yep, that'll be good. Now we'll burnish again. Like I say, I'm not pushing hard because I don't want it all distorted. I'm just doing this lightly until it feels smooth to me, which is not quite yet. <clears throat> so I'll do this because I'm sure this is not overly exciting to watch. So when I get this nicely burnished in, I'll come back. Okay, I've got them all nice and burnished. So I'm gonna take my, if I can pick it up, my little tiny plastic piece that I made. And it's definitely not perfect, but you know what? It's close enough. I'm gonna take my blade that I have. There we go. Get this in half. I'm just going to cut. I don't have to color this or something. Yeah, I can't see the thing. I'm just going to trim it. And I can always trim up the edges and stuff, or, you know, adjust it to make it look better if I need to. 
I apologize if my head's getting in the way, but I'm having a hard time seeing this. And there's that one. And then we'll do this one. Well. There. I'm going to get as many bumblebees in there as I can. I'm pretty sure I'll be doing another bumblebee cane. I really enjoyed it. And I've done a few things with it, so I'm sure I'll use it again. Don't want to lose that. So here we have, mind you, this is, I put a varnish on this one. So we have that one, and we have our earrings now. So I think it's going to be cute when we're finished. I hope it, I hope so anyway. So for this, I think it looks okay. These are gonna need to be baked, so I'm gonna set them aside. To make sure the edges are nice, they seem to be quite nice. Okay, now for our beads, I'm gonna take, and this is just a little tiny cutter it is, it's almost half an inch, I guess. Pretty close to half an inch. It's just a small one. And this again is one of my um, second largest setting. I don't want these to be big at all. Oh, I just put two into one. Oops, and then I just dropped it. <clears throat> anyway, this is what I wanna do. Make these little tiny balls. I keep thinking I've got black clay on me. I don't. I'm gonna do these little tiny balls. Might have to go a little bigger. Maybe, I'm gonna try and see what it looks like. I need this to pick up these because they're very delicate. And I just want to, yeah, that'll be okay, I think. Maybe, let's see what it looks like. If I don't like it, then I'm going to go to a bigger size bead. I don't like it. That's going in the scrap pile. So let's try two together. If I don't like this one, then I'm just going to scrap the whole idea. All right, let's pick this one up here. So all I want it to do, really, is just do like that and another one somewhere else just randomly that's all I want to do so then it's sticky oh toss my little ball around and then just give it a little bowl yeah I'm not liking it so I'm scrapping that idea so I'll think of something else. I might just do little round gold beads and that's probably what I'll do. I'll try a little piece of this. Some of my leftovers. Let's see what these will look like. I just want something to go in between those other beads. And I can use some of my pearls or or whatever I have for beads to go instead. Instead of making them, I don't have to make them. I just like making them if I can. Definitely have a few. And I like them flattened out a little bit. And I just take my acrylic block which is what I've done with those. And I'll just give them a little squish. Not too heavy of a squish because we still have to put a little hole in them. And I think that'll be okay, right? Maybe I'll do some bigger ones for the bigger beads that I have. 
Yeah, I think that'll be okay. So I'm gonna make some of these beads and then I'll bake everything and then I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I did have some gold beads and I decided to try doing these this way. I took a sheet of black, Primo, ran it through my second largest setting, fold it in half. Then I just took these, laid them on top, burnished them in and flipped it over, did it on the other side. Oh, that was not so great, but anyway. Unfortunately, we can't see what we're cutting on the other side, but they're fine. And that's what I did with these. I took the leftovers, rolled it up, and made some lentil beads, just little tiny ones. So now I'm just going to bake these, all of these. I'll go in the oven and I'll bake them for an hour. Primo's recommended temperature is actually 275 for an hour. And when that's all done, I'll come back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, the beads were at the oven. I drilled holes in them. All I did was use my little hand drill and started at one side and went right through to the other. I figured I would do this off camera since it would be a bit monotonous watching. So I got them all done. Now I just have to um, fair thing these. And what I'm going to do is string them onto wire. And then I'm going to dip them in my thing and they will hang to dry. So when I get these all done, I'll be back. All right, see you in a bit. Hi, I'm back. These, I've uh, varnished them. I started, I wasn't sure what I exactly wanted for a chain for the uh, necklace part, but I've decided to go with this pattern. And then my next one, I want to do the smaller bead on here. And then I just keep reversing it. And I'll show you how I did them. I cut some 20, what gauge did I use? 26? 22. 22 gauge wire. And I made my little loop at the end. Now you can buy these. If I can pick it up. Um, your open head pin. And you can use those if you want, but I'm just making my own so I can save those for something else. I have some crystals here that I'm using. And that's what these are, my crystals. And then I put two jump rings in here, and just for a little added touch, on a smaller jump ring, I put a C bead. These right here. Just to give it a little bit of a zingy and I just put one on here as well on the front of the earring right here well if it'll stay there for me you can oops if I get into screen you might see that on there I haven't decided if I want to add it more or not on there but I think that one's enough for the earring I don't want to overdo it I thought it was kind of cute So, we'll do this one. I already have a jump ring on here. And I will open this jump ring. Oh, I feel like i got to sneeze. All right. I'll get myself back in order. So I've been working on this so much. It's like, oh, yeah, what am I doing here? Okay, I'm going to open up this jump ring and slip on the uh, seed bead one. Just got to bring that up around so I can... Find my opening. Guess I closed it pretty good because I can't even find it. I think it's right here. And I'm not showing you how I did these. I mean, it's obvious I opened up the little jump ring and put it in there. It's just they're so fiddly, and for me to actually try and show you that, whoops, on camera is going to be impossible. You probably can't even see me trying to put it on there. There, and I'm going to close that. Now these are the wires. Made my own little loops. 
but did I make this one? No, I'm thinking that's gonna be big enough. I can use one of these eye pins. If I can get a hold of one. Can I put one of my crystals on here? My small little bead with my bumblebees. It's hard to find the holes in here. And I'm just going to pull this forward towards me. And then I'm just going to make my loop. Like so. stuck to my finger and then I'll just stick my ear wire on it probably should open it up a little bit just like so and then close it and then we have this done so now all I have to do is open up this jump ring again See what I mean, how hard it is to do all this? <laughs> Especially you're trying to focus it into the camera. I use these ones, probably easier. To open it. And I lost my little sea bead. And now I'll put my little air, ear wire on. There, just like that. And we have our, let me turn this bead, another one. So there's two of them. And for these, now I'm going to do that small one. Oops. So I have this one here that I made up ahead of time. And I'm going to put a crystal. Well, I already have one there. That's where I don't need it anyway. I usually sit down and do up a whole bunch of these and then I'll put them together. As you see, I already did a bunch of these little seed bead ones. It's, it's just easier, I find. Just to get ahead, I'm gonna pull it towards me and then I'm gonna give it a little twist. Make sure I get it big enough. I'm just going to wrap this around here. Snip the end off. Make sure that wire is not sticking out so it doesn't poke anybody. Like so. Then I'll take two more jump rings. on one of my jump rings I'm going to put one of my seed beads on it and I'll put it in here and on this one and close it before I lose it open up another jump ring yeah I have two in there you don't have to put two in there I just thought it looked nicer with two So I'll hook one in here and the other one over here and close this one. And there you go, with our seed bead in there. So I'm going to continue this pattern because now I'm going to do two of these with a crystal and I'll add it to this and I'm going to keep going until I get two, let me see. at least eight inches. And I'll come back when I'm done that. 
Okay, so all I have to do now is put on the clasp. And we'll need two jump rings for that. So here's one. Put on the clasp. Close the jump ring and my fingers are very sore right at this moment. I've had to reduce to using two, which I should have right from the beginning and I wouldn't be having a problem. The other one, I don't have it here. Okay, there. There's the one part of the clasp. And now for the other side. And I keep forgetting to mention that <clears throat> with this piece, if anyone would like to win this, all you have to do is like, share, and subscribe. Oops, someone swapped that out. And you could win this. I'm going to let it run for, let's see, today's what, the 15th? I'm going to let it run till. Let me get my calendar. I should have been more prepared. Today's the 15th. I'll let it run right till the 22nd. And come the 22nd, actually it'll be the 23rd, I'll announce who the winner is. And I better write that on my calendar so I don't forget. So anyway, here it is all done. Hook her up. And the earrings. So, like I said, if anyone would be interested in winning this, all you have to do is like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. Don't forget to leave that comment. So, that's four things like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel and you could win this and I will mail it to you directly. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed.